I'm very happy, excited, and honored to have my good friend Roger Simon here back in the house. I said it right. I'm you, not making any mistakes. No. I hope not. It. Perfect. 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 And Mihai, I gotta get it right. Mihai. You got it right. Mihai right. Grunfeld. It's a beautiful name, though. Sounds a little different, though, but I love it. Yes. And it's I a like the different. glasses, too. Mm -hmm. Very nice. <laughs> the dressmaker secret. And Sarah. Sending our love to your wife. She couldn't make it today. Thank you. Yes, she Both. sends her best to you okay. and to everybody who watches the show. A lot of followers. She remembers. We have a lot yes, of you do. Yes, in you New do. York, in Japan, in Argentina, in England, in France, they're wow. watching. The Great. We're very, very. Wow. Yes. Very thrilled. Yeah. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Right. It's a lot of work. Even Poughkeepsie? I hope so. But not I really. Hope we'll, so. Work, we'll work on that. That's where we're from. We're, we want to get the show up in Poughkeepsie. Yes. Because yes. But why not? Why not? You see, when I see, I was watching, I was flipping channels last night, and I end up, I always end up on PBS. I love to work hey, in PBS. Hey, it's a good place. Right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like sometimes it's not that you don't appreciate what's going on in terms of the great networks right. HBO, Cinemax, NBC, CBS, New York One, Fox, Help Me God. I mean, it's a whole mix. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? We learn. But it's nice to go back to interviews. Sometimes right. it's too much, too many commercials. Right. And it's too, uh, the questions are always kind of like pretty delivered in the same yeah. basic yeah. way. Sound bites, almost sound bites. It when seems you, you know, like, you know, yeah. In, uh, quick. Yeah. yeah, it sounds a little bit, uh, not that it's a script that everybody yeah. has got to do their research, I guess, to a certain degree. Yeah. Of course. To yeah. be ready. Uh, for the audience, for the cameras, but it's just, uh, it's nice to go back to PBS. Mm -hmm. It's nice to go back, and here at MNN, we have a lot of fun. This is a lot of work. To mm -hmm. come here, get the work on, we have to set up the lighting, right. it takes about an hour and a half. Yeah. I'm just giving a little bit of the breakdown for yeah. people, they need to know what we have to go through. You do the work and we have the fun. We do the, yeah. And we have they the do fun. the work. <laughs> <laughs> Susan did the work in Pauline, Gloria Messer, she's coming back to us very soon. She broke her ankle. I'm giving a lot of information. I know. Let's begin. Right. Okay. Are we happy? We're, We're happy. happy. <laughs> We're great. We have a great time. Great. Let's talk about this beautiful play. Can we please bring it on? Bring the synopsis, if we can, Roger. What wow. the story is all about, if we can. I don't know if I could, even when I was directing the synopsis. <laughs> how short or how long? Yeah, you know, um, the synopsis. I'm going to let Mihai do that as the writer, I think, because he's, he's the, he, half of the writing team. Yes. And then I just interpret. So, Mihai, why don't you, if I may. Yes, please. Yeah. All a little right. bit of the synopsis of this. So, this is about uh, two women who had been friends in the 1940s during the war. And the play happens 20 years later. And it's about one of the women. Her name is Maria, and she's, she has a son, Roby. Mm -hmm. And Roby's trying to find out who his father is. He does not know who his father is. So this, the you play. Mean, we should say which war? Second, Second World War. war. Right. Right, yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. Right. So he's trying to find out who his father is. And Maria had given him a story saying that his father was an officer who died during the war. And it just so happens that this man is coming back. And the whole play is about Roby trying to find out if this man is his father or not. And then we have another man, a Jewish man, coming into play. Apparently, the mother has had two lovers at the same time. Mm -hmm. Which, for some reason, was when I read it, I read it twice. Do my work. Wow. Oh, yeah. Whoa. I read it twice. It's interesting because it explores the relationship between mother and son. Yes. And he's very specific about everything, even when he takes the picture. And she's like, don't touch my things. Like, she's taking the picture. And she's mm -hmm. asking his own mother, is this my father? You know, there's a lot of things that are just very powerful. A lot of secrets, a lot right? Of secrets, a lot of secrets, a lot of secrets, and he's trying to he figure out. He wants to know who his father is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is he yeah. alive? Is he dead? Yeah, who he's dead. He died. How? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more thing. He's also, he also lives under socialist regime in Romania, in Transylvania. So he would, does not like where he lives, and he wants to get out. So this man coming in, possible, possibly the father, we don't really know, mm -hmm. will take the, the son eventually, will help him leave the country. Okay. And the idea of, of all these secrets that you just mentioned, of all of these people having all these secrets, is sort of the central 
thing that they all have in common, um, and in particularly in this society where they come from, where people live with these secrets, um, to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they're under surveillance a lot of the times, living in this kind of society. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an important thing maybe to bring out now. Right. these days where we used to maybe in this country think well we don't have that um, that's for the other side of the world but more and more in our world today it seems like we uh, are in danger of maybe losing some of the privacy we used to have yes. and people are beginning to hide a little bit of things that they didn't have to hide before or try to mm -hmm. so it's quite relevant in that way Although we're talking about 1963, we're talking about Romania. Romania yes. um, uh, Mihai himself uh, having come from that part of the world, and although it's not, an, uh, it's not autobiographical, the play it is based on the fact that he experienced that world mm -hmm. and <clears throat> as a young man uh, also escaped and went to the West. So. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the play is about a lot of things, the search for identity, mm -hmm. but mainly um, in the end, uh, I, I, I think to me, uh, the more I read it, the more I, 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 of course it's got all the political things and it has all the social things, uh, mm -hmm. it has all the historical stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a play that I think is very entertaining in the sense that it makes you think. Um, but in the end, it's about something very powerful emotionally, I felt, and that was, in the end, all of these characters have to learn to forgive, mm -hmm. which is such go. a hard thing to do for all of us, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's 1963 Romania or whether it's 2017. The fact is none of us are all lily white. Mm -hmm. uh, one way, in one way or another, we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, we do terrible things sometimes to each other. Mm -hmm. And I found the real core of the play to be the importance of being able to forgive. Mm -hmm. And that's what I ended up saying to the cast the very first rehearsal. I was trying to find what I thought about the play myself because when I direct, I always want to see, what, if I can put it in one sentence, what the play is about, I'm usually okay. Mm -hmm. If I can't, I'm in trouble because then I'm going at too many things. Mm -hmm. And all the other things come through usually that one thing I feel. And that's not a rule, it just helps me. So for me, it was ultimately, uh, mm -hmm. and we struggle with that. We struggle because I, I don't know if it's only that. I, it I isn't think it's it isn't a lot just more. That. Mm -hmm. It isn't just that. I was just finding something for myself. For you right. as directing. But it is right. about a lot of things. Yeah. For me, it has a lot to do with uh, getting out, with escaping, with getting yes. out of a bad situation, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which has to do a lot with my life. But it also has to do with all of us have secrets. As human beings, mm -hmm. you could speak of politics and a specific situation, but as human beings, we have secrets. We all hide something. We all have many chambers in which we keep reality. So how much of it you bring out into right, the world, into life? Because then when you life. give too much, then you, there is a problem. The more they know you, the worse, the better, the worse. Oh, mm. you got to open up. Does it, do we have privacy nowadays? Because I saw somebody on CNN the other day saying, that there's no such thing as private in this country. People, they need to Not understand any longer, right. that as long as you put in the words in an email, shooting an email, or putting a comment on Facebook or on Twitter, they can follow you every step out of the way. I mean, basically, literally, you have to keep... Looking at TV. Yeah, but you... That may be something. It, right, but it's like what we keep here in our heads. Yeah, right. <coughs> right. Nobody has any access to. Mm -hmm. Nobody right. can. I can. You can read behavior. You can read it too. You're a director. You're an actor. You, you're a master in reading behavior. But at the same time, it, it, there's not much that we can hide. You understand? Like we keep things for ourselves that we open up. If you open up, then you get yourself in trouble. Right. And then if you're too honest, then they start seeing your flaws. Yeah. But then when you don't want to say too much, then people wonder mm -hmm. why is he so quiet about it? Is he hiding something? Mm. So it seems like it is not an ending situation, either or, whether you open up and you're free, mm -hmm. and you show yourself right. your character, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or you decide to live much more of a seclusive right. life. 
where people are not allowed to go in. And the play, what I like about it is it explores that. Yeah. Right. And like, you know, we're in a f free society, supposedly, right? I mean, we pride ourselves in this country of being in a free society. And compared to the rest of the world, when people come here, mm -hmm. even now they say, you know, you're lucky. You have that free society. And we are. However, it may not be as free as it used to be. And for us to get used to that and how we live now with that and with the element that we're living in now, it's, it is a bit of a question. Uh, how free can we be? How much can we say now? Yeah, um, is it safe yeah. to say much? Yeah, and what is correct and what is this and what is that? So the play touches a lot on that. It's mm -hmm. not just the history. Um, and, and for me, it's a very personal thing. That's what I want to hear a little bit yeah. about your personal take yeah. to mm -hmm. the story. Totally, yeah, because it is from his his life, and and that's really where it came from. And it it also I think what's interesting is how this came about, the the actual play, um, the story of the, the play, story and, of yeah, the play. and um, how like the play it. came about. Mm -hmm. um, in so terms of, yeah, go ahead. I don't know. So it started as a novel. I wrote a novel. It was an idea that I, I had a friend who, who at age 18 discovered that his father was not who he thought. So his mother came up with um, a, another story. He had thought one thing, it was, and then his mother told him what was the truth. So I took that as the kernel and developed into a novel, you know, and one day... How many uh, pages is a novel? 320 pages. How do you, how does it work to bring three, how many pages again? 320. 320 pages into how many, we got about 60, 90 pages About 80 play? pages the play, right. That's the, that's the difficulty. There's the story, yeah. there is the story, right. So <laughs> how do you bring, because you're, you're tempted to bring yeah. all these elements to the equation, right. but yeah. you have well. to leave them out. Elements and characters and yeah. Yeah. places, but it was a novel that had a lot of dialogue. I really like yeah. writing dialogues, and I really like, there were a few places where it happened, a lot of it happened. So I met, uh, I met Sarah, Roger's wife, you know, and we exchanged books. We, we li up, live up in Poughkeepsie at a farm, a collective farm. We met, we exchanged books, we read each other's books, and she said, Mihai, your book looks like a play. And I said, it, it is, it does, I know that. She said, shall we make a play out of it? I said, if you have more time, start with it. And she actually took the book and made the first draft. How long did it take her to just do the first um, draft? You know, I don't know exactly how long. I know that uh, she, she worked, she she worked was a little bit. Of it. Yeah. She worked quite yeah. a bit with it, and she told me about it. And, and, and you know, we we all live, as Mihai said, in in, in Poughkeepsie, and, and we're all members of this farm, and we trade things. So it happened Beautiful. just through exchange. exchanging writing. Mm -hmm. And then they came to me afterwards. Uh, Sarah first started writing a draft and showed it to Mihai. I don't know and how. And then many we worked. We we worked. Many drafts. Many, many drafts. Once, me and yeah. I first looked at it and said, now can I join you? Right. Because originally Sarah said, well, let me see what I can do. Uh -huh. And then when he read it, when she, he said, this is interesting. Could I try with you, I think? Yeah. And, and they said, let's go as a team. And then they said, uh, Sarah said, I got this little guy upstairs. He's a director. Can we bring him down here? <laughs> so I came down and I read it. And then we started. And mm -hmm. it went through many different drafts over, I would say, two and a half years it's of writing. It's a long writing. process. Writing well, is a long, would you say that it's a long though. process? It's a very long process. Yes, but we, we had something that helped. We had several readings. We had at least three readings. Yeah. The first was so. um, at Vassar College, where Mihai is on the faculty. Mm -hmm. And we just had a very informal reading uh, using uh, some of the people from The Portrait, Sarah's last play, we've had them come up. Mm -hmm. Ratanya Alda mm -hmm. was I there, and my son Dan Simon yes, read, and, and Ratanya's son Jeremy Bright, and, 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 Roger, uh, and, and, and Robert. And Robert Gregory, who's in my Simon studio, who ultimately wound up in the cast we just used it off-Broadway. Mm -hmm. And we did it there once for an, uh, good friends who came and watched. Um, we got a lot of good feedback there. A lot of feedback there, and 
back to the drawing board, you know. Yeah. But we did get that, that initial feeling was always, and this is what sometimes, as you, we were talking about before we went on the air, it's always scary when you write something. You, you, you want to be told, put it on. You, it's scary because is it good, is it this, is it that? And you want to be, on one hand, you want to get a critique, you want help. On the other hand, oh, please, don't, don't, be so don't be so hard on it, don't be so hard on it, be nice. <laughs> you know, come on, don't, don't kill me. See how good it is, yeah, please, yeah, not, please, not the problem. So we always felt, though, sometimes you feel this is something. This, yeah. You have to feel, right. even though it needs work, you, you have to feel this is, this is special. There's something that you feel when, when you get a piece of material that you go, I want to work on this. But how do you separate yourself from your work? There's a personal process. Writing is... Well, well you put it out. You, you put it out, but it's like, how? How you do you put it out? How do you say, okay, I'm going to get it done, I'm going to write it, I'm going to fax it, I'm going to send it, we're going to have a call read, we're going to make it happen, I bring the actors, we make it happen, let's get drunk right after. I it's not that <laughs> easy. I mean, come on, it's not... Well, they're getting drunk right after. That's pretty easy, actually. <laughs> I, that's not hard. It's but not easy it's at right. all. No, I mean, I, let I, go. I, I cannot right. even imagine. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm writing myself, right. and I told you, I'm writing this piece, and I have people like Karen Giordano, who's been such yes. a great muse. My love to Karen Giordano. She's a great She's talent such and, a, a woman, and a wonderful such a person. Lady. Yeah. And I have people like Lynn Cohen, I told you that. Yeah. Yeah. Just putting my work yeah. and I, okay, now I have to get it out there. But well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, the only answer to how do you get it out there, aside from, <laughs> aside from the, the real hard work, of literally getting it out there, which is hard, just pushing it out there and saying, hey, just this is mine, please look at it. That's hard, yes. number one, because yes. you're, you're asking people to take time. You're saying this is worth your looking at. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that it is worth looking at. And that's hard for some people. For other people, it's not so hard. But the hardest part then is once you get it out there and somebody says, let's look at it. And let's bring in some actors and let's do a reading. And I have this all the time in my studio, which combines actors, writers, and directors for training, development, and production. But the, the hardest part is when I bring the writer in with something, they say they want to hear it. They say they want feedback. But when they get it, they it's hard for them to let go. It's hard for them to accept sometimes that this has to go. That that, that, yeah. that that this has to be cut. That they, it, so th that's the hardest part for many writers, that they all of a sudden it's no longer just theirs. It's a very hard thing because when you write, it's yours. You right. And right. if you're writing you're a book, to it. if you're writing a book, it's yours. Right. If you're writing a novel, it's yours. Right. You write a play, uh, it, it's yours when you write it. So once, once you get, you it get once you get people involved that are actors, directors, and people. All of a sudden, what happened to my baby? I'm now sharing this? Wait a minute, who am I sh I'm sharing this? Mm -hmm. And even though they know it intellectually, this is a very hard thing to do when you're hearing things. And this gentleman and Sarah are very good, and that's why we, the work continued at, at, at opening themselves up and learning have to what they mm -hmm. could use to their advantage. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just being unselfish by accepting things, it's, it's actually very selfish because you're, you're actually stealing ideas and you're grabbing and then you're saying, okay, I can use that. Now I can go they, back uh, to the drawing board. The time, it's my yeah. work, but right. I'm using those ideas rather than I don't like that idea, I don't like that idea, I don't like that idea, and shutting yourself off, which a lot of writers who are very good writers, mm -hmm. who are novelists, who come to me to write a play, but they're so used to them being the only th person Mm -hmm. That when they hear other input, they go, they I don't want to cut to anything. Right. I just want to hear good things. Right. So that's the hard part about putting it out there, Cece, I right. find. It's that's the hardest part, to be able to say, it's terrifying. I want to listen and use what I'm hearing. And then deciding what I can use, rather than, you can't l use everything. But you, but right. yeah, that's the thing, that you, you can't, can't use, use everything. everything. No, but you have to be, I can use this, I can use that, I can, you know what I mean? You have to know your own work mm -hmm. well enough. Right. Which, which they knew, and he knew, and Sarah knew the core of what they were writing. So when I would come up with ideas, they could say, that's a good idea, but that, Roger, doesn't go with what we want. Mm -hmm. They could say that. And I would throw out different things, and some of them they said, that's great, let's do it, and they went in. Other things I would say, no, I'm not sure about that, that doesn't go. So I knew when I got that, that th these are people that knew what they wanted, mm -hmm. but they were open enough also 
Mm -hmm. It's that combination that makes a great new play happen. Right. It's that combination, and that's what went on for two and a half years of, it started with 11 characters? How many yeah, characters? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask yeah, you, the book how many characters? Well, the book has many characters. Many, yeah. many. many characters, uh -huh. you but know, the and then you have to bring it down, and we managed with four. Actually, so it's it was really five. It started with five. The first draft had, had uh, Martha. Right. Marta, the Marta, daughter of one the of the daughter main of, characters. of Irma was mm -hmm. in the play, uh -huh. and she only had that one scene. And I said to them, "Do you she really need Marta? Out. Do you really she need Marta? And if oh, you're going to use, man. I said, if you're going to use Marta, how about bringing her back? How about me? No, well, I don't see. You know, she's in the novel. She's, she's in, the, in novel. the novel. She's got her place, you know. And for yes. the play, she she went for a walk. Right. We right. decided we can say what we want to do without her. It, do you have you can keep your notes when you're writing obviously you work in the computer but how things come to you like ideas characters thoughts do you are you obsessed with the writing process or you do you have a time you say I'm gonna sit down and just write and, and concentrate myself and I'm gonna get on it from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. No, no, do you have no, no it comes to you not at all not at all I, I work regularly mm -hmm. a few hours and then I stop uh -huh. And if you keep on working regularly, the thing is alive. In, it's alive in my mind. So I, do you need to I don't to come rest? 10 hours. No, I no. don't write for 10 hours. It's okay. very seldom. I write for a few hours and go and do, I have to teach. So go and do my work. Right. There's right. the other part. And then it comes back and keep on working with it. As long as you don't put it aside. Hemingway used to say that it was good for the sake of the creative process to let the play, mm -hmm. to let the book rest. He will never, like, he will be writing and writing, he will stop and mm -hmm. not touch it for six months or a year and then go back to it. Th there's something that I yes. did, that I'm doing with my work, just to give you an mm -hmm. example. Yeah. I have to do that, <clears throat> that I have to, I just get it out, get it out of my system. I'm sorry that I keep going back to me, but it's like I'm trying to relate to you in terms of writing right. because it's a, it's a difficult process. And it's a very personal process. Right. And when you mute your thoughts, when you let them run, when you come and bring your ideas and your thoughts, and then when you have to distance yourself from your own work, mm -hmm. to let it rest mm -hmm. and then go back to it. Mm -hmm. The I interesting thing about that, so you see, yeah, you, can, you can, as an actress and yes. director, actor, the same thing, um, any art. But I think with acting, I, I, I tell my, my acting students, and, and when, you know, we're working on Tennessee Williams again. It's his birthday last week, uh, or actually this week, mm -hmm. coming up on the 26th. Bring that Williams thing you brought in last year. Bring it back. Well, I did that, they say. No, no, bring it back. Mm -hmm. You haven't worked on it for a year, but you've been working on it. What do you mean? I say, it's in the back of your mind. You've been cooking it. Mm -hmm. You put it to rest, mm -hmm. but there's but things there. happening without you consciously knowing. Right. When you bring it back, those feelings and thoughts will grow in the work. Right. So that even though you're putting it to rest, it doesn't mean it's not really dead. Right. It's 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 percolating, and it's growing. Particularly with the great roles, particularly with rich art form, it, it, it mm -hmm. percolates and, and it grows and you grow as an actor, you, grow, you as grow as a writer. As an actor. You don't have to be writing every minute mm -hmm. for that to grow. And, right. and, and so those ideas and things in any art, but particularly, you know what it means to go back to a really yes. rich role yes. uh, like Blanche or whatever. Mm -hmm. And every time you do it after two years, you're going to grow as an actress because you know the words now, Yes. but you haven't worked on it. But now you're coming back to it, and because you know the words, now you can really start to do it. Sure. You, before you were just learning lines, you know. Right. Now you that's, now. That's right. Because I, sometimes even actors, they say, "Oh, well, we did a scene, or well, we're working on the scene. Okay, it's done." I say, "What do you mean it's done?" No. It's I started. think the work is never done. Right. Right. Yeah. With it's great. never done. Even this famous writer Jorge Luis Borges from Argentina. I don't know if you heard he of kept him. Kept on. I teach him. Uh, you teach him. <laughs> okay. So you know the man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You know the man. I know the man. Because he was the man. Yeah. And he said that I will n uh, he was so obsessed with the work that he wouldn't be able to just, uh, let's put it this way. He said, if I read my work and I keep reading my work, 
it's not going to be done. It's not going to be published. The work will never get published because he's always finding, you know, how Pauline, we're having, we're here, baby girl. We're good, we're good. If the work, if we get stuck in the same thing, it's yeah. never going to get published. The work is never going to get published. You know what he did? He rewrote his poetry for 50 years. And the same poetry kept changing and changing. And depending on what edition you look at, it's a different poem all the time. Okay, we're getting it's, really it's, it's, it's a process, right? It's totally a process. It's totally a process. Let's talk about the it's casting. It's always alive. Because I'm interested. I wanted to. Get, we're going to do a second part of this interview to get the first part more into the writing process than the second part of the interview. I was aiming for the casting, the actors, and working in the space. And mm -hmm. you know, you're a master director, Roger. You've been doing this for many, many years. I'm only 105. And you're only 120. Yeah, 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 that's, that's right. Okay. I'm lying. You're right. <laughs> we've been around. Roger, we've been He's around. He's being I am, modest. I am an old woman. You're a kid, baby. No, baby. Yeah, Roger, yeah, look yeah. at me, sweetheart. I'm old. I'm old. I feel ancient. And yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Totally. Mihai, I'm throwing totally, you off totally. a little bit. You're going to yeah. sit to yourself. Yeah. Roger, yeah. I thought they were going to uh, have a serious interview. This is serious. This is serious. This this is totally. Serious as it gets. I, I get it. This is serious. You get it, right? We're I passionate. Totally get it. Yeah. We're committed. Right. You see, okay. Sarah is a class act. <laughs> yeah. Right. We agreed on yeah. that. We, we, we agree. already agreed. I have to agree on that, but I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's a class act. <laughs> yeah, she is. In every way. Yeah. Yes. In every single way. Yeah. You working together, do yeah. you guys give notes to one another? No, we, we sit no. and we try out things. Okay. So we read and you together. Okay, perfectly fine. We work really well. Oh, you got we it about done? Oh, we got the first interview gone, so I couldn't even say bye. I'm sorry, Pauline. Okay, we're going. We're going, so we can open up to me. I guess we got to change, not a DVD. I'm thinking like in the 90s. Now we everything is digital, so we're <laughs> yeah, dead. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm it's thinking about, oh, do we have to tape in? Uh, yes. Suzanne, Susan. So it's a wrap. I want to change your media. Okay, baby. Okay. Please do. Great show. Thank you, All right. love. Where um, is she? Thank you, baby. Yeah, Great. it's good. We're going to the second one. Okay. All right. And this is going to air because everything is already, the shows are going to be showing in April. They're already out. Mm -hmm. I, I interviewed Robert Snyder, 